Hello everyone and welcome back to Golden Dragon Games. I'm your host, Rocky, and this is episode 2 of Golden Dragon Video Game News. And our top stories for today is about some of the news to come from Nintendo's E3 2018 livestream direct and a bit of news from the Nintendo Treehouse live event day 1, uh, both of which actually happened yesterday. So uh, this video is actually one day late uh, than it was meant to be, so apologies for that. But I couldn't have reported um, on the news that came yesterday on the same day just because of time constraints and there was actually quite a lot. Also, just one more thing to mention before we look at the news. There's some news from the Nintendo Direct and the treehouse that won't be included in this video because there was so much news to cover mainly from the actual Nintendo Direct itself there wasn't so much news in the treehouse but still uh, there was you know still quite a lot of news and those missing bits of news alongside any news from the Nintendo live treehouse day two which is today and then uh the live treehouse day three tomorrow i will post that information on my instagram uh which there is a link to in the description of this video also when it comes to smash bros which was like a big portion of this nintendo direct um there's some information that I missed out just because there was so much info to cover so I would recommend going to watch like the full informational trailer and um, talk by Mr. Sakurai the director of Smash Brothers and there's an official video of that on Nintendo's uh, YouTube channel anyway I still do have a lot of the Smash Brothers news that was revealed still, but uh, there's some of the finer details that um, I won't be covering in this video. Uh, but anyway, uh, I've rambled on with this intro for long enough, so without further ado, let's have a look at the announcements and information we have from yesterday. Okay everyone, as Smash Brothers was such a big part of the Direct, we will be taking uh, a look at it last and now as you can see on the screen we're going to be going through some of the new information about Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee from the Direct and a bit of news from the Treehouse and actually most of the new news actually came from the Treehouse there was like a little tiny bit of news from the main Direct about it uh, but anyway on the screen now should be the first screenshot. Okay, uh, sorry, I just had to quickly cut there for a moment so I could um, actually make sure that I have the screenshots that I took um, of the Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu footage from the Nintendo Treehouse um, in the correct order on my iPad. Um, so I know which order to put them in there during editing for the video but anyway so as you can see the first screenshot on screen is the male protagonist slash uh, the male trainer of let's go Eevee and let's go pikachu and he has a mew now basically in the nintendo e3 2018 live direct uh reggie fils may president of nintendo america was going over some information we already knew but also this one little bit of new information which is to be able to obtain the mythical pokemon mew you have to buy the pokeball plus um joy con controller and for those of you who don't know what the pokeball plus joy con controller is it's literally a pokeball that's also a joy con controller basically but uh most of you probably already know what the pokeball plus is so i don't need to explain it again but yeah that is literally the only way you're going to be able to obtain mew unfortunately so yeah i'll probably be buying the pokeball plus because i am a very big pokemon fan and i think it's 
you know, a cool accessory. Maybe a little bit on the pricey side, but still, I think it's a cool accessory. Um, and I think it's okay coming with a Pokemon, but I would have preferred uh, if they decided, which they have obviously, to have it with a Pokemon already inside that you can transfer to the Let's Go games. i rather it had been another Pokemon, like just a random Pokemon. i rather would have liked to actually be able to catch Mew in-game, in like an in-game non-timed event, rather than I have to buy the Pokeball Plus just to get this Pokemon. Um, to complete the Pokedex, but anyway, uh, I'm rambling on again. Let's move to the next screenshot, which is which is the GUI for the inside of the backpack, and the rest of the screenshots that I have are from the demo that they were playing on the Treehouse live stream, which was straight after the initial Nintendo Live Direct for E3. But anyway, you can see the GUI of the backpack has changed a lot, um, obviously, and you can see the person demoing it has got eight raspberries to help them catch Pokemon because obviously there is no, uh, you know, making the Pokemon's health go down anymore. It's just basically like catching Pokemon in Pokemon Go. And also you can see they have 995 Pokeballs. Uh, but I guess they set that up specifically for the demo, just in case uh, the person demoing it live was having trouble catching a Pokemon and, you know, demonstrating the new catching mechanics. But anyway, so yeah, that's that. If we move on to the next screenshot, we can see just another GUI menu for selecting the item with cancel, use this item, and then, of course, for the Raspberry, it says um, a berry that makes it slightly easier to catch Pokemon when given to them. And now in the next screenshot, we have the GUI and the sort of level up menu for, you know, when you finish the battle and your Pokemon gain EXP and, um, you know, that menu and, you know, it says like level up and how much XP they gain. But anyway, this isn't actually after like a trainer battle because... Um, as we all know, there's no, you know, battling wild Pokemon on their own anymore, so you would think you wouldn't be able to gain XP that way. Well, actually, uh, there's two ways to gain XP now. There's either battling trainers, which will gain you EXP, or if you catch a Pokemon, that will also uh, gain you EXP. And from the looks of the demo, it looks like all the Pokemon in your party get equal EXP, so maybe that means the EXP item share item is no longer in the games. I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me on that one. But anyway, yeah, so that's like two ways of leveling up. But also there will probably still be rare candies in the game to uh, level your Pokemon up or some sort of item. But anyway... Onto the next screenshot, we see the battle GY and Pikachu is in battle with a Caterpie and I believe this was a, actually a trainer battle but I can't quite tell because obviously when I took the screenshot, um, Pikachu is just in the photo. But anyway, you can see, you know, actually no, it is a trainer battle because it shows the opponent's only got one Pokemon which is level 3, Caterpie and Ben. The trainer's got six Pokemon and then Pikachu at level eight. I mean, it shows the little select arrow and then the three different options of fight to, you know, choose your different attack. And then there's also Pokemon to, of course, switch out your Pokemon. And then there's bag to, you know, obviously heal your Pokemon with healing items. Okay, now on to the next screenshot. This is the GY you will get when you're asked if you want your Pokemon to learn a new move from leveling up and probably from a move tutor. If move tutors are still in the game, I'm not 100% sure about that one. But anyway, uh, Pikachu leveled up enough to learn the fighting move Double Kick, and you can see 
the person demoing the game is replacing it for Tail Whip. Or rather, replacing Tail Whip for Double Kick. Because obviously, Double Kick is much better than the normal type move, Tail Whip. But anyway, so yeah, and you can also see the stats at the right hand sort of corner of the screen with HP, Attack, Defense, Special, Special Defense, Special Attack. Or, no, sorry, that's not Special, I mean Speed um, at the bottom of that hexagon shape. But also, you can see we have CP level like there is in Pokemon Go. Is CP level in Pokemon Go? Or was that already established thing in the main series? No, I think it's from Pokemon Go. But anyway, so yeah, and you know, at the bottom left-hand corner, you can also see the name of the Pokemon, Pikachu, Pokedex number 025, and the ID number, and then uh, currently no EXP points needed to level up. And then we move on to the next screenshot, which is the actual, you know, GUI of uh, return to move select screen or forget move. And then if we move on to the next screenshot, we can see the actual um, pause menu with Pokedex, bag, party, uh, communication, which is for local and also uh, local wireless, that is, um, I mean, and also uh, online multiplayer because there is some l online functionality for the game. Also, we have, of course, the save button and it says at the bottom right hand corner of the GUI uh, plus for more options or something and then B to quit that menu. Also, we have a Pikachu face saying Pikachu and Chase. I have no clue whether that's just a thing there in... Um, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, um, or if that sort of logo is in the pause menu for Let's Go Eevee, or if it's an Eevee head for Let's Go Eevee, or if that's actually a selectable option, I'm not really sure. But anyway, in the next screenshot, we actually see um, people are actually demoing the game multiplayer, and you can see one of the trainers is actually riding on top of the Onyx, there's that, and then next, they're entering into Pewter City, and you can see what Pewter City looks like in its all in its, you know, 3D HD glory. And then in the next screenshot, we meet a character named Tracy, and Tracy is the new rival, because obviously we're not playing as red and blue, because I'm not, I still don't know what to classify Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee as, but they were inspired by Pokemon Yellow, but, like, you don't play as red or blue, or you don't play as red and blue's not your rival. But anyway, so, yeah, this is the new rival for uh, you being a new trainer, and this new rival's called Tracy. Uh, so, yeah, he's just talking to the player, as we can see in the next screenshot still, uh, saying, like, do you know about the Pokemon Gym, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then in the next screenshot, we see the new uh, redesigned Pokemon Center. Well, it's technically not redesigned, but it. when I say redesigned, I mean, like, redesigned in 3D from, you know, the 8-bit uh, pixely art from back in the day. And then... In the next screenshot, you can see um, all the Pokeballs on that, like, table thing which uh, shows your Pokemon screen. And then, you know, the little music jingle goes, doo, 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 doo. Uh, I can't actually <laughs> emulate that, but never mind, you know, to signify, oh, your Pokemon are uh, all healed now. And also, um, something that I didn't manage to get a screenshot of, but... In the before picture, you know, like, when you have Pikachu on your shoulder and you're just about to talk to Nurse Joy, when you give Nurse Joy all your Pokeballs and, you know, she puts them on the table to heal your Pokemon, Pikachu will actually hop off your shoulder onto uh, the front desk of the Pokemon Center, sort of like how Pikachu did in the anime, which I think is a cool little detail, so yeah. And now in the next screenshot, we have... Something that wasn't in yellow, but uh, the director of the Pokemon series who was actually there, who you can see in the top left 
little face cam, uh, Mr. Mas Masasuta. Ah, oh, I, I completely butchered the pronunciation of his name, but never mind. But yeah, the director of uh, the Pokemon franchise said something along the lines of their, were there the sort of little interactions with, you know, other people in the game that weren't in yellow, but are like in this game sort of thing. So you can see here. Um, this person wants to go to the Pewter Museum and their slowpoke is refusing to budge. And then if we go to the next screenshot, you can actually see uh, the trainer, uh, our character, just with the slowpoke. And basically, uh, what happened in the demo was the lady who wanted to go to the Pewter City Museum asked you, could you stay and look after my slowpoke? So that uh, there was like a yes and no option. Uh, of course, they would demo in the game. They clicked yes. Then there was sort of this little sort of cutscene. And then, as you can see in the next screenshot, the uh, lady has returned and she gives you a big pearl as a reward. And that would actually be good to sell at a Pokemart for money. Yeah. Then we move on to the next screenshot and we can see the outside of the Pewter City gym which looks fantastic in 3D and HD and everything. And then we move on to the next screenshot and we see the inside of the gym, which has had a bit of a redesign. I'm pretty sure because like the stands with the people in them to the left and right, I'm pretty sure those weren't there in Pokemon Yellow. But anyway, if we move on to the next screenshot, we can see it's sort of doing a cinematic of the left hand side of the gym and then we move on to the next screenshot there's a um, cinematic view of the middle of the gym and then we move on to the next screenshot there's another um, sort of cinematic view um, of like the middle of the gym and you can see Brock at the top of the stairs just waiting for a trainer to challenge him and then you can see in the next screenshot that the guys that always stand next to the Pokemon statues with inside the entrance bit of um, a Pokemon gym is uh, just introducing himself and saying, Hi, uh, you're here to challenge the gym, aren't you? And also, something the trailer, not trailer, I mean the demo that they showed. Now, I'm not sure if this is like necessary to battle the gyms, but when... They were demo win the game and this guy was talking to you. He asked you if you had a grass or water Pokemon to battle the gym because rock um, types are weak to grass and water. And the person playing the demo actually had a Bulbasaur and a Squirtle and they just like selected Bulbasaur and showed it to this guy. And he said, cool, or I can't remember what the NPC, NPC said said something like okay you can pass now so it looks like you may need pokemon of the uh, super effective type or the type that is most effective against the pokemon used within certain gyms i'm not 100 percent sure on that but anyway yeah if we move on to the next screenshot we can see brock in the opening cutscene uh saying so you're here, I'm Brock, Pewter City Gym Leader. And then, unfortunately, they did not show the battle between the trainer and uh, Brock. I don't know why. But anyway, in the next screenshot, we can see the another GUI menu uh, of the Pokemon Team of Six. And the person is selecting Bulbasaur. And as you can see, there's different options. Check summary, move Pokemon, take out of Pokeball, change name, and back. Now, change name, that's an interesting one. Does that mean uh, we'll be able to change our Pokemon's nickname just whenever we want now? But also, uh, basically what they did was select take out a Pokeball. And what that did was Bulbasaur came out its Pokeball and then that Pokemon was following the player and also when it comes to um like your starter pokemon which will either be pikachu in pikachu version or eevee in eevee version uh pikachu seems like 
it will always be on your shoulder and Eevee will always be on the top of your head. So yeah, that's just something else to note as well. But anyway, if we move on to the next screenshot, this is within the menu for the multiplayer. And you can see it says the communication channel must be open. Please choose a player type. Nearby players, local wireless communication or far away player internet. And they chose nearby player. And then it came up with this next me menu uh, in the next screenshot I'm showing on screen right now. Saying what would you like to do? Either link trade, single battle, or double battle. So it seems like there won't be triple battles in this game, but at the very least, they do still have double battles. But anyway, next, they say uh, in this next screenshot, as you can see on screen, please enter the same link code as your friend to connect with them. And basically, from my understanding of the link code, is you pick a link code and it matches you with someone who's picked that same link code so you can see the person who's demoing the game is choosing Pikachu uh Pidgey and I think they choose like another Pidgey and then in the next screenshot we can see uh somebody's link code saying a player has been found please wait and then it uh you select your Pokemon as you can see in the next screenshot uh right here also, apologies if uh, I'm sort of talking a bit too fast um, or if the screenshots are like coming up really quickly and then disappearing quickly. I'll try and, you know, smooth everything out during editing. But anyway, in the next screenshot, we can see a brand new building or the inside of a brand new building. Basically, what this place is, is where you go to the Go Park. So when you transfer Pokemon over from Pokemon Go to let's go they will go to something called the go park and you have to go into that go park and capture them uh, for them to then be on your team or be sent to your pc in the let's go games but uh interestingly enough this might sound like the safari zone basically what the director of the pokemon franchise said while he was there while they were demoing the game live he actually mentioned that where the safari zone was in yellow now the Go Park is in the place of the Safari Zone, and basically the Go Park replaces the Safari Zone altogether. So yeah, now in the next screenshot we can see the actual inside of the Go Park with Pokemon. Somebody has transferred from Go to Let's Go, running about, and then the trainer just walking about. And then basically you walk up to a Pokemon, and then I'll just bring up the next screenshot now. Uh... You can see it gives you uh, an option to catch the Pokemon itself, uh, like it says on screen, if you catch a Pokemon in Go Park. Its original information from Pokemon Go will be changed, is that okay? And then you have options of yes and no. I'm not sure what um, information of the Pokemon will be changed, but I guess we have to wait and see about that um but anyway in the next screenshot we can see a similar feature to go where you can send your pokemon to the professor in the go app for candy and you can also do that in the let's go games apart from you're sending them to uh professor oak so you can see this person has selected a Rattata of level 3 and is sending to Professor. And of course, because it's in the Let's Go games on the Switch, it's going to be Professor Oak. And then, in the next screenshot, we can see one of the items you can re actually receive back from the Professor when you send him uh, Pokemon you have caught. Uh, this is a quick candy which I'm guessing boosts the speed of a Pokemon. I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, if we move on to the next screenshot, we can see the full Pokemon team of six and then a list of some of the different types of candies you can get being Health Candy, Mighty Candy, Tough Candy, Smart Candy, Courage Candy and Quick Candy once again in a candy jar. And that is actually all the info and screenshots I have 
from the news of Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. So I will just quickly cut here and I will be back in a second with the next bit of news uh, for this video. Okay everyone, it's time for the next part of the video and in this next part we will be discussing Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion and its release date. So, uh, up on screen right now should be the first screenshot and this screenshot is from the Nintendo E3 uh, Live Direct slash Live Presentation and as you can see it's uh, one of the levels from the Octo Expansion Pack but also at the bottom left hand corner of the screen, oh uh, wait, not bottom left hand corner because that's where it says uh, Nintendo, but next to where it says Nintendo you can see the release date is officially summer of 2018. And then if we go to the next screenshot, you can see some more footage of, I'm not sure if that's footage of the uh, Octo Expansion, it looks possibly like Salmon Run, but it might be a level from the Octo Expansion, I'm not 100% sure, but anyway, you can see um, at the right hand corner of the photo, it says again, Splatoon 2, Octo Expansion, Nintendo, Summer 2018. And then in the next screenshot, this is from the Live Treehouse. Um, no, sorry, not the Live Treehouse. Uh, the last two screenshots are actually from the 42 second trailer, which was posted after um sometime after the live direct and the live treehouse day one yesterday but anyway as you can see on screen we have three new amiibo uh for splatoon 2 being octoling boy the octoling octopus and the octoling girl now uh i'm not sure when these amiibo are going to be releasing unfortunately i don't think there was a release date revealed in the trailer for them no actually no there was definitely no release date uh revealed for them in a the trailer but below where it says amiibo ink ink something or other um it does say octoling girl octoling boy and octoling octopus splatoon amiibo figures are available exclusively in the splatoon series free pack set so you won't be able to buy these amiibo separately by the sounding of uh that sentence it sounds like you'll just have to buy them in um in a free pack um amiibo set but anyway in the last screenshot we have this is um again from the 42 second trailer it says available tomorrow now this trailer said it was uploaded still on the 12th yesterday so available tomorrow that must logically mean the octo expansion is available today uh being wednesday the 13th of june of course um i'm well it should be because it says available tomorrow and like i said it was uploaded on the 12th today's the 13th uh wednesday so it should be available so i'm not sure how to check if it's available because uh even though i bought the splatoon game uh splatoon 2 game sorry for my switch i haven't actually had the chance to play it and i don't know how you download the dlc and i don't know how you see if it's available or not yet but uh anyway that's all the splatoon 2 news uh from yesterday okay as that's all the splatoon 2 news we have got um I will just cut here again and I will be back in a second for our last bit of news for the video. Okay everyone, I am back now and it is time for the final part of the video. And of course in this third part, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we will now be concentrating on Super Smash Brothers for Nintendo Switch. And also just as a little reminder, um. All the other stuff that was announced in the Nintendo E3 2018 Live Direct. All of that stuff uh, will be posted on my Instagram. And actually, in fact, it's already posted on my Instagram. Uh, and like I said earlier, there will be a link to my Instagram in the description of this video. But anyway, uh, without further ado, let's have a look at the screenshots for Super Smash 
Brothers for Nintendo Switch. Okay, everyone, I am back. I just needed to find the first screenshot uh, that I got of the all the Super Smash Brothers information stuff from the uh, live direct because all the screenshots that I have for Super Smash Brothers, none of them for some reason are in order. As you can see on screen, it is our first screenshot for the Super Smash Bros game for Nintendo Switch and the official title, full title rather, of the game is Super Smash Bros Ultimate. And there's a reason why it's called Ultimate, but uh, just to say, it's not a port, it's actually a brand new game, so it is indeed the fifth instalment in the Super Smash Bros series. So yeah, and oh, also, before I forget actually, I should also mention this at the beginning of this part. Uh, if we look to the next screenshot, we have an official release date. Uh, we knew it was coming in 2018, but we didn't know when until now. And as you can see, it's the 7th of December. It's coming at the end of the year, so that is something to look forward to for the holidays and for Christmas. Now, let's move on to the next screenshot, which is this beautiful piece of artwork of all the fighters in the game. And as you can see, it says... Every fighter returns. Why? Because Mr. Sakurai, uh, I think I actually butchered his name there. Sorry about that. But anyway, so yeah, the director of Smash Bros, Mr. Sakurai, actually stated officially every single character slash fighter in Super Smash Bros history is making a return in this game so you know we have all the returning characters like Pichu, Yun Link, um, I'm trying to think of some others, the Ice Climbers, Solid Snake, Wolf but also some of the characters have actually been changed so if we go to the next screenshot we can see Charizard is no longer a single character it's back to the Pokemon trainer and being able to switch out between Ivysaur, Charizard, and Squirtle. But also, um, an alternate costume for the Pokemon Trainer now is the Pokemon Trainer Leaf, who was the main female protagonist from the Gen 1 game remakes of Pokemon Leaf Green. So yeah, and oh, also there used to be some sort of penalty, I believe, for switch out... Uh, Pokemon in a battle or a round rather uh, that penalty uh, it's gone now so it's perfectly safe to switch uh, which Pokemon you're using in a round of Smash Bros if you're playing as the Pokemon trainer now the next character to have some differences is Link as we can see on screen here uh, Link is now Breath of the Wild Link uh, with his champion's tunic, but also he gets the tunic of the wild, which I haven't got a screenshot of, unfortunately, but he does get that as alternate costume. Also, one of his new moves is that he can use the remote bombs um, from Breath of the Wild with the Sheikah Slate. Also, if we go to the next screenshot, he has... A new Final Smash. Uh, well, actually, I think his old Final Smash might have used to be uh, firing that arrow. I'm not completely sure. But anyway, this is a brand new Final Smash. Uh, or just a different Final Smash for him in general. Where he unleashes, as it says in the subtitles, uh, the ancient arrows from Breath of the Wild. And you can possibly see, but in the screenshot, he's using his final smash ancient arrow against a particular um familiar zelda villain who of course is back because all the characters are back but he's got a redesign so we shall move on to that character next and that character is ganondorf and ganondorf is back to being his design from the legend of zelda ocarina of time and then if we move to the next screenshot 
because it's Ocarina of Time, Ganondorf, his final smash is obviously the Demon King Ganon. So yeah, that's his new final smash. And while we're on the topic of Zelda characters, we might as well move to the third Zelda character, of course, being Princess Zelda. Now you can see on screen Princess Zelda, but also Sheik, who's still a separate character right next to her. But you can see Princess Zelda is no longer Twilight Princess Zelda, because now she is based off of the design from A Link Between Worlds. But also, she has a new Final Smash, which we can see in the next screenshot now. Uh, her new Final Smash, as you can see from the subtitles, is a ceiling move called Triforce of Wisdom, and you can see her using the Triforce of Wisdom uh, to defeat uh, one of the other Smash Bros. characters, and I think that's Lucario, but I can't quite tell. But anyway, now let's move on to the next screenshot, which is a whole bunch of Kirby's. So yeah, of course Kirby's returns, like I said earlier, all characters, which is so cool. But of course, because every character has returned, Kirby can copy every single character. And as you can see um, in the text on the bottom of the screen, it says, So the more fighters we have, the more challenge in he becomes to develop. So yeah, I'm slightly going to be terrified about going up against Kirby in a round of Smash Brothers now. Okay, everyone, I'm back. Sorry, I just had to cut there again so I could find the next screenshot. So, now on screen, you should be able to see Mario facing off against Luigi, but you can see Mario no longer has his normal hat. It is now Cappy from Super Mario Odyssey. Now, it was said that Cappy basically won't do anything. I think it's just there for, you know, decorative purposes. Um, you know, so Cappy doesn't do anything. Also, two of Mario's alternate costumes are now the wedding outfit from Odyssey and also the builder's outfit from Odyssey, which is also the same builder's outfit that you see him wearing in Mario Maker. So, yeah. Oh, also, unfortunately, I don't have screenshot images of the wedding outfit and the, uh, or rather, the wedding tuxedo he has from Odyssey and uh, the builder's outfit um, of him in Smash Brothers. But anyway, let's move on to the next screenshot, which is King DDD's final smash. Now he's basically a cage fight. So you can see King DDD whacking his hammer um, against his opponent and then... You can see in the next screenshot, his opponent, which is, I think that's Bowser, is now literally thrown against a wall of a cage fight match. And as you can see in the uh, subtitles, it says where he unleashes missiles and jet hammers. And basically what it means by that is it's actually masked DDD from one of the Kirby games on the 3DS, and he basically just spins around and literally just whacks his opponent, like, through the wall of the cage fight, basically. Like, it is a crazy but cool new Final Smash for King DDD. Okay, on to the next screenshot image. As you can see, Pit now has a new Final Smash, which used to be the Three Sacred Treasures, but this time he'll be riding in style on the Lightning Chariot. Okay, if we move on to the next screenshots now, we can see Wario's Final Smash, Wario Man, has changed quite a bit. So if we move on to the next image, you can see Wario Man there um, defeating Cloud? Is that his name? No, sorry, I mean Corrin. Uh, from, you know, Fire Emblem. But anyway, you can also see it, see it says Boom uh, Crack or something like that. You know, the sort of comic book style, sort of like Bow, Pam, and like all of that stuff. And then you can see in the next screenshot, um, it says, 
After transforming, he no longer uses individual attacks to get the job done. And you can see, uh, well, Wario Man is actually farting. That is probably the most horrible way for you to de be defeated by an enemy. Especially Wario, but that just seems typical Wario to me. But anyway, moving on to the next screenshot. Donkey Kong's final smash is an all rapid fire punches like in Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, as you can see in the screenshot right there. Also, sorry, some of these screenshots are a bit blurry, but there was a bit of trouble with my Wi-Fi and also the stream itself occasionally dropping down um, in quality, um, you know, visually wise, uh, but mostly probably because of my Wi-Fi. But anyway, let's move on to the next screenshot. We can see Lucina and Dark Pit here. Why are we, why do we have a picture of Lucina and Dark Pit? Well, that's because you can see the E's next to their numbers that they're introduced in Smash Brothers ultimate and the e's basically stand for as we see in the next screenshot echo fighters so basically you know dark pit and lucina are essentially clones of other characters but now they're calling them echo fighters and a brand new echo fighter slash playable just in in general a new playable fighter was introduced so we see in the next screenshot it's none other than Princess Daisy, who is officially the um, Echo Fighter to Princess Peach. And I think she's basically very similar to Princess Peach, but with a couple of differences I can't um, completely remember. Okay, sorry again, folks. Uh, just needed to find the next couple of screenshots. Uh, so anyway, as you can see, the first screenshot on screen is of one of the stages being Prism Tower from Pokemon X and Pokemon Y. And we're just basically going to go through some of the stages that were revealed. And also there was quite a lot of stages, it looks like, that, uh, that they'd be including maybe almost every stage in Super Smash Bros. history, but don't quote me on that one. But anyway, if we move on to the next screenshot we can see the classic mario galaxy well i'm not sure if it's a classic but it's a classic to me um but anyway in the next screenshot we can see midgard from final fantasy and then in the next screenshot we have congo falls which i can't remember what it used to be called but it used to be called something else and they basically um renamed it now then if we go to the next screenshot, we have the Lilac Cruiser from Star Fox. Then in the next screenshot, we have a returning stage all the way from Smash Bros. Melee, I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was Melee or the original N64 or both games. But anyway, we have Princess Peach's Castle now. And now in the next screenshot, we see another returning stage, which... Is it a returning stage? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Spirit Train is a returning stage. But anyway, you can see there the stage Spirit Spirit uh, Train. Uh, anyway, on to the next screenshot. We can see uh, from Metroid, we got uh, Fridge something. Does that say Frigid or something like that? Anyway, Frigid Orpheus? Orpheon? Orpheon, I don't know how to pronounce it. Moving on, we have the Green Hill Zone, of course, for Sonic. And now onto the next screenshot, we have New Pork City, which is a stage that I've never heard of. So I'm not sure, like, completely if it was in an old Smash Brothers game, or even if it was in the Wii U one, which I played a lot of, or uh, whether it's a completely new stage, which I it is but correct me if i'm wrong in the comments section of this video but anyway moving on we have wrecking crew then we have tortima island and a brand new stage from splatoon being moray towers anyway moving on next we have another brand new stage being the great plateau tower from the legend 
of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And then if we move on to the next screenshot, we can see another shot of the Great Plateau Tower. But as you can see, the roof section of it uh, has crumbled because um, at some point when they're all fighting, uh, it crumbles. But then it somehow, like, repairs itself. I'm not sure how it does that, but that's what it does. And now, moving on to the next screenshot... We have the brand new Super Smash Bros. Ultimate GameCube controller. Now, I like it. You know, it's the classic uh, black GameCube controller, but it has the new Smash Bros. logo. But I'm not sure. I feel like they could have changed up the design a bit more. Like, uh, I don't mean like the actual controller mold or the, you know, buttons or or where the buttons are, or how it functions, or anything like that. But I just mean, like, maybe we should have had, like, the Smash Bros. logo on fire, like it was in the first teaser trailer. I think that would have been cool on the controller. But overall, I still think it's a good uh, Smash Bros. Ultimate GameCube controller, and I'll probably pick one up. But anyway, uh, we are going to be moving on to... The next screenshot now. Now we can see the Inkling Smash Bros. series Amiibo, which was revealed in the Nintendo Treehouse uh, straight after the actual Direct. But also, just to say, there will be a Princess Daisy Amiibo, but unfortunately they didn't have it uh, to show us at E3, at least not yesterday. Um... So, yeah, there's no official photos of the new Daisy Smash Bros. Amiibo. Um, but, yeah. Anyway, before we move on to the last bit of information, which was probably one of the most exciting, especially uh, for Smash Bros. players and fans who have been asking for uh, this particular thing to happen in Smash Bros. for a while, or should I say a particular character to be in Smash Brothers. Also, sorry if I'm too far away from the mic and then my voice sounds a bit, you know, um, quiet, but I'll turn the audio up um, in editing. But anyway, uh, there's some stuff I don't have screenshots of, but I will just quickly run through them. So, first of all, assist trophies. We got Rodin, I believe that's how you pronounce it, from Bayonetta. We have Bomberman, Squid Sisters, Knuckle Joe, Metroid, Ghost from Pac-Man, Lynn, Waluigi, Andros, Nintendog, Ricky, Starfly, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, a Burrowing Snagnet. Snaggrit, I can't pronounce it properly. Anyway, it's um one of those enemies from Pikmin. We also have Midna in her imp form as an assist trophy along with Suckapon and Jeff. And for new Pokeball Pokemon, we have Beware and Solar Galileo. Now, I'm not sure if there's any other new Pokeball Pokemon, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Also, there are some brand new items. We have Healing Field, which looks to be like it can heal multiple players at once. We also have the Black Hole, which uh, from sounds of a reaction I heard or rather saw on YouTube, sounds like the Black Hole uh, item or at least the Black Hole itself might have been in a past Smash Brothers game. So I'm not sure, so I'm just going to count it as a new item. Anyway, another new item is a launch star from Super Mario Galaxy. And then another new item we have is fake smash balls. What's a fake smash ball, you may ask? Well, you know, the normal smash balls that you have to smash to activate your final smash? Well, now they're fake ones. And if you break the fake smash orb... Uh, from the looks of things, uh, because it was shown during like a one-on-one -on -one match, both players are chucked off the screen and automatically defeated. So yeah, that's a thing now. So you have to watch out for what's the real Smash Orb to activate your final Smash, and what's the fake Smash Orb that will knock you off the stage. Anyway, 
Also, um, I have some more notes here. Uh, this is um, a direct quote from Mr. Sakurai. Your starting roster may be as small as the original N64 game. We're streamlining conditions for unlocking fighters and we want to make the process interesting so it feels like you're constantly gaining popular characters. End of quote. Also, 8 player smash returns and Mega Man's final smash now as Proto Man and base, you know, when they're all firing um, the laser beam from their cannon arm. Uh, now, let's see. Is there anything else that I need to read from my notes? Ah, yes. This is important. All your old amiibos that are characters that are fighters, you know, in Super Smash Brothers will be able to work with the new Smash Bros game and it seems like all the old data that you still have on your Amiibo will carry over to the new game so you won't have to retrain them up. Um, anyway, is there anything else that I need to mention? Uh, ah, yes. The final thing we need to talk about is a brand new character reveal that was at the very end. So basically, Mr. Sakurai was like, uh, we have like, you know, a special announcement. It's cut to a CGI trailer of some sort of futuristic, maybe inside a spaceship. But anyway, it was like um, a huge pit with um, a bridge going across. And who was walking on that bridge? It was Samus, Mario, and Mega Man. And then suddenly, not long after they were just walking across that bridge, Mega Man is grabbed by a reptilian tail and chucked out the way. Then all of a sudden, Mario is grabbed and also chucked out the way. Samus closes her eyes. She turns around, pointing, um, you know, the gun arm she has um, straight ahead of her. And she opens her eyes and on the floor, Mario's cap is there. No Mario, no Mega Man. Then all of a sudden, the bridge breaks and a giant scaly reptilian creature appears. And then we see in the reflection of Samus's green vise on her helmet, it is none other than her arch nemesis, Ridley. Ridley is now officially a playable character. And I thought Ridley was quite a cool character already, but it it's cool to actually have him as a playable character now. But anyway, as you see on screen now, it says Ridley hits the big time. That is correct. Mr. Sakurai actually managed to get him in Smash, and people said he was too big. Now, like, I haven't played really any Metroid games at all, but I would still consider myself at least a bitter fan of Ridley. I think he's a cool character. But anyway, in the next screenshot, uh, this is also part of his CGI reveal trailer. You can see he's just casually spinning Mario's cap um, on his claw. He's just like, yeah, uh... Ridley is here now. And then in the next screenshot, we can see Ridley roaring as he is on one of the stages. I'm not sure which stage that is, though. Then in the next screenshot, we can see Ridley is just floating there. And there's uh, Kirby wearing Samus's helmet, obviously uh, copying, using the copy ability he has, which um, I think is quite funny, actually. And then in the next screenshot, we have screenshot of Meta Ridley, which I presume is just an alternate costume for him. Um, it's not a part of his final smash because I did see his final smash, but I forgot to take screenshots. But basically, his final smash, um, at least for Samus, he was fighting Samus, and basically in his final smash, he throws her against her spaceship um, in space, and then he unleashes a giant laser beam as his final smash, which is actually quite cool. And now, for our last screenshot, this was also revealed in the Treehouse Live straight after, but we have an official Smash Bros Ultimate Smash Bros series Ridley Amiibo. Now, nothing was talked about Metroid Prime 4 during the live presentation or the treehouse straight after but i have a feeling the ridgely amiibo will have some sort of functionality with metroid prime 4 
um, on the Switch whenever that game comes out. But yeah, I'm definitely getting that Ridley Amiibo because it looks so cool. But anyway, that's basically all the news um, for today. So, um, I guess it's time to outro the video now. So, I will just cut here and we'll outro the video next. Okay, everyone, I am back and it is time to outro the video. So, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, there's a link to all my social media pages in the description of this video. Also, feel free to leave a like, favorite, share, comment. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you're new. And until next time, remember, stay golden, stay frosty, and Pisces!